This is the Modeca World Roundtable on the topic of digital economy. Now, there are many initiatives undertaken by the government, and they recognize that talent is a very crucial point in adopting Industry 4.0. But are we transforming our education, our mindset among students fast enough, even among our educators? Now, I'd like to get to uh, Dr. Kaur, being in an academic institution, we often have this perception that they're more resistant to change, or at least uh, fast to change in adopting something new like digital. Yes. So um, I started my career in industry. So uh, when I moved into academia, I do see the difference between the mindset in industry and the mindset in academia. And we're simply not moving fast enough in academia um, in certain areas. Uh, Azwan brought, in, brought up a very good point, which is the way we teach, uh, a lot of it is still based based on the, the previous mindset, the previous, more suitable for the previous economy. Um, but it's changing right now. So we are starting to realize that students coming to class, they don't really need all the knowledge from the lectures because with YouTubes, with, uh, with, with internet, they can get all the information, the data they want. So what's really important is teaching them the right mindset, having the right people, uh, exposing them to the, the, the habits, critical thinking, um, innovation and, and some of the other problem types solving. of thinking, problem solving. Yeah. So some, a lot of universities, uh, University of Nottingham, um, for example, and, and a lot of the other universities as well, uh, they're trying to adopt a new way of teaching, uh, incorporating much more hands-on, much more exposure to, to industry, and instead of just solving problems from the textbook, we want to go into the industry and solve problems that's real problems in industry. Ramji, as an industry observer, do you feel that there is uh, enough initiatives to bring everyone on board in terms I think of education? academics will say, and, and teachers at the uh, tertiary level of uh, secondary primary school will say there's too many initiatives going on and they get confused. But, sure. yeah, but I think one thing we have to remember as we're talking about, you know, maybe uh, we need to change the way we're teaching or what, because, uh, you know, Intel has got a big facility in Penang and I, for three years in a row once, I, I would go up there and interview Craig Barrett, because the chairman at that time is the CEO of Intel, he would come down and I think in the third year, I asked him, uh, what, what does Malaysia have to get right in terms of his education, you know, and he smiled and he said, you know, just make sure that your, because Intel is engineering, right, so he said, just make sure that your engineers come out with a sound grasp of the fundamentals, you know. We do not need them to be to come out and be you know industry ready. Just make sure that they understand the fundamentals of the, whether it's electronical engineering, you know, chemical engineering. You get that foundation right. We will take them in, and six months after they come in, they are ready to run with us, you know. And that's all you need to do. Because without the foundation, then they can't do anything. And no student who comes out right in the in the world you're talking about jobs changing, who has a found, sound foundation in in programming, in you know, in the sciences, in math. In engineering, none of them will be out of a job, no matter what happens, how the jobs change. But the world is leaning towards the sciences, uh, especially in the digital economy, So you go, and the higher paying jobs are going to be there. Okay, so Malaysia has somewhat uh, kick-start this uh, initiative to introduce computational thinking Absolutely and science yeah, in yeah. the national That's curriculum. Cool. But technology changes in a fortnight, so you know, keep having that curriculum to keep up with this fast-paced changing technology that is something else altogether yeah, yeah i you know i don't think we you know knowledge is everywhere on the internet yes everybody has access to it yeah. the way that absorbing new information is on a daily basis not in classrooms mm. right i i have a different view of life if you think about all the new startups everybody's excited about all this startup oh. stuff right everybody thinks they're going to be a millionaire you know maybe one in a gazillion <laughs> will yeah. right unicorn, unicorn right? looking for unicorns right is that uh, so when you have that, it's really less about technology, yeah. uh, but more about business models. And business Strategy. models requires you huh. to be creative. Yeah. Creative requires human imagination. You know, imagination is personal. Creativity should be taught. Hmm. You know, how to think outside the box all the time. So this that is something. Very correct. Early level. So it doesn't matter what. Yes. It's not about coding. Coding changes every year, yeah. right? So that is a constant change. But yeah. creativity is forever. Coding itself is, is just a means to an end. I still like the, the idea of teaching uh, computational uh, uh, skills at school because what we really want is not the, the coding itself. It's actually the mindset. Because in order to code properly, in order to survive in the digital economy, you need to think in a certain way. And, and that doesn't come naturally for all everyone. Sure, right. So that is the skill that we want to teach. The mindset, the, teaching, uh, the, the thinking uh, habits, 
So that's the education part. What about the current workforce that we have? Clearly, a lot of us, including myself, are not really ready for the digital economy in the sense I don't have the technical skills. We are consuming more than we are producing. Right. So uh, just quickly, your thoughts about how companies are adapting, helping to upskill talents because yes, we have the up and coming workforce, but what about the rest of us? We'll be left behind. Your thoughts, Karam I think when you say companies upskill, companies will upskill or they will skill their staff on, on their immediate needs, you know. And right now, the, everyone's looking to bring in revenue next quarter or you know, coming meet your numbers this year. Very few look, you know, two-year time frame and say we need to do that. You just hope that they're moving fast enough, right? Because training is a big business in Malaysia, right? Multi-billion ringgit. So lots of companies do train their staff. But uh, they only train them in the areas they need to. What and the industries which are, which are most agile in adopting change? Agile, right? Those are the tech industries, telco industries. Like, you know, one of the largest uh, GLCs now is actually mandating that all their staff are digitally trained. So it's already starting with some of them, and, and maybe the leaders are those which are at the forefront of digital disruption, right? Your uh, retail companies are not. They are being disrupted, but they are not being, you know, uh, they, are, they are staff or they are not doing enough in the digital space yet. So why? I don't know. Maybe because it's only 5% of retail in Malaysia is still online, so still 95% walk in. So and so they, they, they yeah, but they, they don't see that yet, and they think they can, they got time yeah, to adapt. Electricity disrupted industry for 100 years. Digital will do the same. Yeah. Thanks for wrapping that up nicely for my second block because I have to go for the last commercial break, but we'll be back shortly to pick up on that point from Azwan.